Christoffel's symbol. When no force is applied, war lines tend to stray through the dimensions of space and time, and along the trajectory, velocity vector of the particle does not vary. The velocity vector can be written as the sum of its components multiplied by the basis vectors. Starting from the particle, we draw two arrows on the grid that represents the directions of amplitude of each coordinate. These arrows are called basis vectors. We denote them by E0 and E1, giving the coordinates they respectively describe. With these two basis vectors, we can decompose the velocity as a sum. For example, two blue arrows and one red arrow. The numbers 2 and 1 are called the components of the vector. The value of the components indicate the rates at which the corresponding coordinate increases. More generally, we can write the velocity vector as the sum of its components multiplied by the basis vectors. To compactify the expression, we can summarize the whole sum by writing only one of these terms and replacing the numbers which designate the coordinate by a Greek letter. In mathematical expressions in general relativity, the same term is summed over all coordinates one by one. Using this expression and knowing that the derivative of the product is the sum of each term multiplied by derivative of the other term, we obtain a relation between on one side the change in the components of velocity and on the other side the change in the basis vectors themselves. The basis vectors can indeed vary throughout the trajectory because the grid that we choose is our coordinate system and very will be irregular. Although the vector remains the same as a geometric object, its components on the grid can vary as the particle moves. When we think about the evolution of a basis vector along the world line can be decomposed as the sum of its evolution along each of the coordinates multiplied by the speed of the particle. Because the faster the particle moves, the faster the basis vector will vary. For each coordinate, this gives us a new quantity which indicates how the basis vectors vary along the coordinate system. This variation is expressed as a vector that is the derivative of the basis vector with respect to the coordinate in question. This vector is no longer depend on the trajectory but only on the structure of the grid itself. This vector can be expressed as through its components denoted by capital letter gamma. In our two-dimensional case, these components exist in eight different versions, two components for four different vectors. These are called Christoffel's symbol. Christoffel's symbols are one of the most important mathematical objects used in general relativity as well as in Riemannian geometry. Christoffel's symbol is due to a change in metric tensor from one location to another or a change in basis vectors from one location to another. In a geometric sense, they describe changes in basis vectors throughout a given coordinate system. Physically, the Christoffel symbols represent fictitious forces induced by a non-inertial reference frame. In general relativity, Christoffel symbols play the role of describing how objects accelerate in a curved spacetime. In mathematics, Christoffel symbol arises when you 
parallel transport a vector on a curved manifold. This is due to the fact that the basis has a dependence on the coordinates. If you parallel transport a vector, then you have to consider how the basis vectors change from one point to another. This additional factor will give you the Christoffel symbol. A proper choice of coordinate transformation can make all the components of the Christoffel symbol to vanish. Hence, it is not a tensor. This is exactly the gravitational field. By a proper coordinate transformation, the gravity can vanish in a frame of reference. Hence, physicists will refer Christoffel symbol as gravitational field.